Patriots press pass. And I want to talk about what we're not talking about with Mac Jones, because a lot of people want to make it about talent, right? He doesn't have special talent. He doesn't have the arm of a Josh Allen or the legs of a Cam Newton. And I think some of that is definitely true. But when I watch Mac Jones, I see a quarterback that does a lot of the little things correctly at the position that typically succeed in the NFL. And he has mastered the timing, the ball placement, the just overall rhythm of the Alabama offense. And that's why he put up great numbers there for the Crimson Tide. And we can talk about supporting cast and we can talk about the lack of talent and all those type of things with Mac Jones that typically get discussed amongst draft pundits and everybody about why this player doesn't have as high of a ceiling or as high of potential as other quarterbacks in the draft or other quarterbacks that we see around the league again doesn't have josh allen's arm he doesn't have cam newton's legs so what does he bring to the table and i'm going to show you here today all the things that i see that mac jones brings to the table and we talk about all this kind of stuff like arm talent, like mobility. And all Mac Jones did at Alabama was put up numbers and throw with great high level precision, especially from the pocket and just do next level stuff. Just play good football on tape. And and yeah, we can get caught up in some of those minutiae of, of the just overall physical tools. But I'm telling you, this guy just played great football and we're gonna show you that against the best competition in the college football playoff, Notre Dame and Ohio State, both wins, of course, for Alabama on en route to the national championship last year. So let's pull up the first play here, and we're going to get into some of the things that I just see on tape when I watch Mac Jones and what makes him just a really good high-level pocket passer and just an accurate player and I think a great fit for the Patriots so here's the first play and, and what I want you to see is at the top of the screen here it's pretty obvious that Mac Jones has press man-to-man -man coverage up here he's got a one-on-one -on -one. and what's going to end up happening and another thing that we hear all the time with Mac he throws to wide open receivers and he's always kept clean he's never under pressure well I'm going to show you a bunch of examples today from these two games where he's under pressure a lot and where he handles it extremely well so what's going to end up happening here is this three technique or just a uh, pass rusher interior pass rusher he is going to beat the center inside and get pressure right up the middle on Mac Jones the center is going to overstep and then the uh, defensive tackle is just going to kind of swim over him and get to, into the backfield and watch how Mac Jones just handles the pressure stands in there in the pocket and delivers a great anticipatory throw and I think that's another element of his game the timing I talked about earlier on very seldom do you see the receiver that Mac Jones is throwing to see the football come out of his hand and what I mean by that is that he is throwing with great anticipation and great timing so that when these receivers come out of their breaks or look for the back for the football if they're open the ball is already in the air because Mac Jones has already released the football so let's roll this first play here and you're gonna see it right there at the top of the screen is where the matchup is right he's gonna have one-on-one -on -one and Devontae Smith is just gonna run a little stop route along the sideline he's gonna push vertical in his stem it's gonna stop down at the sticks and watch what Mac Jones does He's just going to stand in there against this pressure, and he's just going to throw a dart to the sideline. So here comes the pulling guard. That's what the play action scheme is. The center is going to step to this defensive tackle there. We can show it from the end zone angle, and you'll see the pressure a little bit better. And it's just going to beat him inside. And there's the pressure right there in Mac Jones's face. Now here's where he starts his throwing motion, right? He's already throwing the football. Look at the receiver. Just got into his break. Hasn't even turned back to the quarterback. Once he turns back to the quarterback, the ball's right on him. We got a first down completion or almost a first down completion there. And we're, we're humming on first down. So here we go. Watch. Here's the defensive tackle. The center, the guard's going to pull. The center is going to step to him. He's going to overset. He's going to swim over him. And Mac Jones is going to stand in there and deliver a dart along the sideline. So here comes the pressure up the middle there it is comes the pressure Mac Jones sees the pressure coming he knows he's got his deep comeback or stop route to Devontae Smith he's just gonna throw it take a hit in the pocket we're on schedule we're in Muhammad now here comes another play where I actually think Mac Jones makes a little bit of a mistake with the protection pre-snap so he's gonna see that something is brewing here with maybe a blitz and he's in an empty set to start with so he's gonna pull Najee Harris back into the backfield to help 
set the protection here and get this blitz blocked. You can see him pointing right there with Harris in the backfield. You got this guy, right? Now, what's going to end up happening is the line is going to slide to his left. And when it slides to his left, this blitzer right here is going to end up being unblocked. So here comes the blitz on the right side and they're all going to slide to the left and it's going to end up leaving an unblocked blitzer. And again, I don't know if this exact trait will translate to the program. I guess we'll see if he has enough wheels, but everybody talks about how this is a statue in the pocket, how Mac Jones has zero mobility, right? And he brings nothing to the table with his legs. Well, on this particular play, Again, I actually think he makes a mental error. He lets the protection slide, even though the blitz is coming from his right, the protection is sliding left, and Najee Harris is stuck on a two-on-one, right? He's gonna have a free runner. Najee Harris can only block one of these guys that's coming on this blitz, right? He can't block both of them. So there's gonna be a free runner to the quarterback, and Mac Jones probably should have reset the protection at the line of scrimmage to make sure his line didn't slide but he didn't, so the line slides to the left. There's a free runner as a result because Najee Harris can only pick up one guy. And watch what Mac Jones is, does in the pocket. No panic, right? Let's just roll out to my left. Let's find the receiver along the sideline. Let's get a first down. Let's stay on schedule. So we're going to show you this play again from the end zone angle. So here comes Najee Harris. He comes in the backfield. You can see the pointing. you got this guy. you got 40, right? 40 is the guy that we're going to take here. Inside threat. Protection again is going to slide to the right or to the left, excuse me. Now Mac Jones realizes, okay, here comes the blitz. Oh, we got two blitzers coming on this side to only one blocker. I better get out of here. So I'm going to get out. Here we go. And you put that pass along the sideline. So that's my fault on that one. I thought that, uh, that they communicated that Harris was going to have 40 he actually takes the outside blitzer. So maybe uh, a little bit of confusion there, but again, confusion the protection wasn't set properly i don't think here he had the right idea just didn't kind of get to the final stages of it and there's a free runner and he still gets out of it he still just rolls out of the pocket calmly finds uh miller forstall along the sideline and we got a first down all right so now on this play is what's called an rpo glance concept so this is a big part of alabama's offense and a common misconception about just quarterbacking in general and RPOs in general, I should say, is that RPO means the quarterback has to have a run element to it. It has to have an option where the quarterback can also run with the football. Not true. A lot of RPOs, I would say the vast majority of NFL RPOs are just run pass options where the quarterback can either hand the football off to the running back or throw the football. It's basically glorified play action. All right, and in this case here, what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna run a power play action scheme or a power RPO scheme, excuse me, where this guard is going to pull, okay? And all that Mac Jones is gonna do is read this weak side defender right here. If that linebacker stays back in the passing lane for the slant route here from Devontae Smith, then he's gonna hand the ball off to Najee Harris and Alabama is going to have the numbers in the box to get a good gain on the ground. If this linebacker comes screaming up to play the run, then he's just going to throw the glance route. He's going to throw the slant to Devontae Smith. Now, it's an open receiver, right? We hear this a lot of the time with Alabama. He's throwing to wide open guys. Yes, Devontae Smith is going to get open. Big part of the reason why he gets open is because this defender right here is expecting the inside help from the linebacker, and he's going to have outside leverage. So he's outside leveraged against the slant route, against the Heisman Trophy winner. You're obviously going to have difficult time when your body positioning isn't favorable like that. So here comes the play. So what the first thing I want you to highlight or see is how quickly Mac Jones makes this decision off this RPO concept, which I tweeted out the other day. I really hope that Josh McDaniels continues to implement these because Mac Jones had 77 throws off of RPOs last year. In this game alone, he was 10 for 11 for a couple of touchdowns off of RPO. So it's a big part of Alabama's offense and the quick decision-making that you see from Mac Jones is a big part of his game as well. So here comes the linebackers, right? They're all going to flow to this run action and that's going to take 
the pa the uh, defender out of the passing lane there. So when they floated this action, Mac Jones goes, all right, I am going to throw this football because there's nobody underneath this slant route. And the other thing that I want you to notice now, so this that's the decision piece of it. Watch the ball placement piece of it because a big part of their offense at Bama, Steve Scarkeesian and their former offensive coordinator talked about this. The reason why they love RPOs so much at Bama is because they want to hit their playmakers and hit their skill players while they're already moving. They don't want to throw to stagnant receivers. They want to throw to receivers that have runways, that have takeoff angles, that have the ability to go ahead and make big plays. So that's exactly what this kind of play is. Mac Jones is going to throw the football in stride to Devontae Smith. And I know that that's something that a lot of us think, okay, this is a seven, you know, eight, nine yard pass, something like that. How difficult is it really to hit the receiver in stride. Well, you, you'd be surprised, right? I mean, a lot of quarterbacks, this ball's a little bit behind, this ball's a little bit low, this ball's a little bit high. You know, the ball placement is just not perfect. And therefore, Devontae Smith needs to break his stride, stop running down the field, and is tackled or just goes right to the ground because the ball is low and doesn't create this touchdown, doesn't turn this play into a touchdown. With Matt Jones, the ball's right there, right? Right on his hip right perfectly in stride and it allows Devonte smith to just run into this football and he beats the safety who takes a bad angle to the ball and it's six so let's watch it from the end zone angle again and you're gonna you're gonna see the read right so the read is number six right here this linebacker he comes screaming up mac jones is gonna pull it he's gonna keep it he's gonna throw the football that's exactly what's gonna end up happening so here comes the pulling guard right there's the power it might actually be counter here and here comes a linebacker stepping up. He sees the pullers, and he's going to step up thinking that this is a run. It's an RPO. Mac Jones is going to hold the football. And look at that ball placement. There's the football right there, right where it needs to be so that Devontae Smith doesn't have to break his stride, and he can take off and score. That's exactly what we talk about when we sit here and we say ball placement being important and leading to easy yards after the catch for the receiver. Mac Jones consistently does that at a high level. Now here comes an empty formation. And this is another big part of Alabama's offense, I would say. And it does what it does here is shows, again, throwing off of leverage for Mac Jones. He's just going to feed the receiver that has favorable positioning at the pre-snap read all right so what's going to end up happening here this is third down by the way and he gets first down he's going to read this underneath defender he's going to have Devonte smith here in the number three spot if he's going to just run kind of like a little stick route here all right and what's going to end up happening is if this underneath defender clears out all right then mac jones is going to know that he's got this defender basically inside leveraged against an outside leverage route right so he's going to be able to just hit this so what's going to end up happening is that defender is going to clear out with this wheel right see this underneath defender he starts running with this wheel route from number two so then when mac jones sees that when he's dropping back to pass he sees okay this defender is clearing out he's going to go vertical with number two that means that i have number three with good body positioning here against this defender who's inside leverage so i got an inside leverage defender sitting on that inside hip of the receiver who's going to break out and i'm just going to throw it right at the sticks and i'm going to hit him for a first down so here comes the throw boom first down right just an easy read for him and an e a quick decision there with the football you get it back here again this defender here if he clears out i'm gonna throw this little stick route all right it knows that he's gonna carry the wheel vertical so he's gonna have nobody outside here because this defender is gonna get taken vertical as well he's gonna have nobody outside of this defender to help him out this defender here he's not gonna have any help outside so he knows that this route is just gonna break off of leverage and he's gonna have an easy throw as long as that defender clears out so the defender clears out here comes the easy throw we're moving the chains we're staying on schedule next play right i mean that's just great quarterbacking i understand that it's not the sexiest throw in the world but that's just a quick decision a quick read and really good quarterbacking and, and that's what you consistently see from matt jones here's another one all right so now we hear always throwing to open receivers doesn't do anything to help you know to to really elevate the play of the, of the receivers he's throwing a waddles a top 10 pick he's throwing a smith the 11th overall pick and heisman trophy winner none of it is mac right 
Here's Press Man again. And he's going to get a little tell here at the bottom of the screen with this short motion, right? That short motion and this defender goes with it. He knows, okay, this is probably man-to-man -man coverage. I also have the defender squaring up at the line of scrimmage. So most likely this is man-to-man. -man. And what he's going to do is he's going to read, okay, the defender here at the top of the screen, I believe that's Sean Wade against Smith this time is going to have good positioning on the vertical route and he's just going to throw Devonte smith open on the back shoulder right so here we go as we roll the play Devonte smith's going to go up the sideline at the top of the screen there and look he's even right now right he's he's got a, a little bit above him actually sean wade so he's got this vertical covered so what's mac jones going to do he's just going to back shoulder it so he just back shoulders it along the sideline throws the receiver open against the coverage yeah it's a nice throw a nice catch by Devonte smith right good job working the sideline good toe tap here but that's a catch that any nfl receiver especially guys that play on the outside in the league that's a catch they should make right and mac jones is throwing the quarterback throwing the receiver open he's throwing that back shoulder he's pulling the string he knows hey if i throw this ball vertical against sean wade he's in good positioning right if i throw this ball deep and i try to lead Devonte smith down the field the cb's in good position he's got this safety shading that way over the top on the near hash i mean most likely that that's an incomplete that might even be an interception if it's not a good throw so instead of doing that i'm going to pull the string i'm going to pull the back shoulder all right and it's just throwing the receiver open just making a play making the receiver's life easier helping them out all right here comes a flood concept all right and what a flood concept is is against zone coverage we're just going to flood a zone we're going to put two receivers against one defender in a part of the field and what you're going to see here is that mac is going to read this underneath defender first so as we roll the play just a little bit so this this defender here is the key for the first for the first part of this decision okay so this defender is going to take the under route that's jalen waddle he's going to run a little under route and that's going to pull that defender up and when that defender gets pulled up mac jones is going to realize okay so i got this defender getting pulled up by the under route i got this defender carrying the vertical right this is cover three so i got this defender carrying the vertical deep and that means that number three is going to flood into this area here on this deep out type of concept, right? It's kind of like a sail concept, I guess. And we're going to have this opening here on along the sideline, and I'm just going to make this throw. Now, the other thing I want to show you, far hash, right? This is a far hash throw. This is an NFL throw. Okay, so he's going to have a far hash throw here. He's going to throw this ball all the way across the field to the sideline. And you're going to see that this boundary defender here is actually going to get a decent read on it uh, once he sees sort of the route concept breaking down he's going to try to break on the on the deep out from the slot and he's going to drive on the football a little bit here and mac jones got plenty of arm to get this ball here you know we hear this so much that mac jones doesn't has a noodle arm he doesn't have enough arm strength all this kind of stuff this is plenty of arm right here for mac jones this is a far hash throw if a guy like Justin Fields make this throw. If a guy like Zach Wilson makes this throw, we're talking about, oh, look at the arm strength here. Look look at how much zip he has on this pass. He's able to make this far hash deep out throw against a corner that's driving on the football, no problem. And yet we hear all the time, oh, Mac Jones doesn't have the arm. He, he can't get the football there. He has, he has a weak arm. He doesn't have the arm talent. Okay, well, this is a really good throw. All right, so here comes the defender here, the bottom defender, he gets pulled up. You see this defender has to carry or stay over the top of the vertical route. And now we can just kind of here, let me get this out of here. Now we can just kind of see the space here along the sideline for this route by number three. And again, Mac just pulls it. And look, the defender drives on this football, right? He gets a little bit of a read on it. He gets a little bit of a read on it. Sean Wade here at the top of the screen. He gets a little bit of a read on it here. He's coming down. This is a far hash throw. And Mac knows, okay, that defender is probably going to come down on the ball. Once I release this, he's going to see it because he's playing in a zone technique, a cover three technique. So he's going to have some eyes on the quarterback. So he knows that Sean Wade is going to come down and try to get that football. So what's he do? He throws the ball to the inside hit. Instead of throwing it outside and leading Devontae Smith into the coverage or into the hit, he's going to throw it a little bit inside hip. And that's going to allow Devontae Smith to shield himself himself at the catch point and be able to make this throw or make this catch again far hash throw thoughtful ball placement nfl throw all day of the week and that's an nfl read too all right he's reading multiple defenders there that's an nfl read here comes another one 
that I think is a pretty good throw too to show kind of, all right, this is another closing window. All right, we're not talking about a wide open receiver against zone coverage here. This is going to be cover two by the defense. The first thing I want you to see is that this looks like a cover two shell, right? You got these two uh, deep safeties here. You got the corners at the line of scrimmage playing low. Most likely pre-snap read. This looks something like cover two. We just got to confirm it. Now, the other thing is, is Alabama loved to put guys in motion. The Patriots will do the exact same thing for him, where they're going to use pre-snap motion more or less as an indicator of, okay, here's what the coverage is. If the motion comes and a defender goes with the motion, that's most likely man-to-man. -man. If the defenders push over or bump over and nobody goes and nobody runs with the motion, all right, that's most likely zone. So here comes the motion. Nobody goes with it, right? Nobody goes with this motion. They're just kind of passing it off one by one. So Mac's going to know, okay, this is zone coverage, right? This is zone. So here comes cover two. Five under, two deep. Pretty basic cover two. He's going to have this defeater right here. This receiver, excuse me, right there, my guess is, is is running some sort of a seek route. Seek route means, all right, I'm just going to read the coverage. I see that it's covered too. I'm just going to sit down in the soft spot of this zone. All right, maybe if this is cover one, it continues up the field on a corner route or something like that. Cover two, I'm just going to sit down in this zone. And watch Mac drive this ball in there. First of all, he's going to see, okay, this linebacker, he's widening to the left a little bit. This corner, he's kind of underneath it a little, but he's there's a passing lane right here. You can see the passing lane forming, and the safety is too deep to affect it. So the receiver properly sits down here. Mac's already throwing the football. Ball's already coming out. All right, that's what we're talking about here. The ball's already out of his hand. So the receiver is not waiting on the football. The receiver has got to wait on this football. And this is another thing, you know, guys like Josh Allen, for example, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes, they don't necessarily need to throw with this kind of anticipation because they can just zip it, right? And if they throw a second late or half a second late, they can throw it into a closing window without having to worry about it because they have so much arm strength, right? They have so much arm strength. Matt Jones doesn't have that kind of arm strength, but what he does is he anticipates these windows and he understands that I got to get the ball out. He plays to his limitations knowing, okay, I'm not going to be able to just whip this ball into a tight window a uh, half a second too late. I got to be on time. So he's already throwing this football. The receiver is just coming out of his break. The ball's already out of Mac Jones's hands. And it's already flying. And you're going to see that this linebacker here and the safety, they're going to come screaming down and try to close up this window. And there's plenty of zip on this throw, right? And a fell throw. And there is plenty of heat on it. I just I want to make that clear like there, there's plenty of heat on this ball especially how well Mac anticipates it so here comes the football right balls already out receiver snaps back to look for the QB balls already out of his hand here comes the football you see this linebacker is probably the closest one to it he tries to close on it here as the underneath defender and he's just late to it because Mac just anticipates that extremely well anticipation ball placement timing rhythm these are the things that you see with Mac Jones all right here comes another really good play from him while under pressure where he does kind of buy a little bit of time with his legs right this isn't a statue again all right, and what he's going to do is he's going to understand that I got this wheel route to beat the blitz and I'm going to throw hot if this blitz comes backside. So they're going to bring this receiver in motion again. And when he brings the receiver in motion again, this time the defender goes with it, right? Goes with it initially. That way he knows, okay, this sideline's cleared out. There's not going to be a lurking zone defender there. If I throw this football over here or have to throw this football over here, then there's nobody over there to affect the pass, all right? If this defender blitzes, which is what's going to end up happening, this defender is going to blitz off the weak side here, he's not going to worry about it because there's nobody over here. He knows that because the motion's taking that defender with him, so there's nobody over here. So here comes the defender. He's going to blitz. All right, and they're going to kind of bust this coverage a little bit. And when he sees the blitz coming, look at this is basically a, a, a no look pass, a blind throw. Like he doesn't, he doesn't look at the receiver and see, okay, you know, Najee Harris is open, right? He just knows because the motion took that defender out of here and that blitzer is coming that there's just nobody over here. All right, and, and and I think that there's a little bit of a bust here. I think this is some sort of man coverage, and the defender, because of the motion or something, gets a little bit lost, and I, I think this backer in this split scheme is technically supposed to have the back out of the backfield. He gets a little bit lost, and Mac Jones knows, again, 
there's nobody over here. All right. This defender cleared out by the motion. There's nobody over here. So all I got to do is loft it over the blitzer's head and get it in Najee Harris's hands and let my back do the rest. And Najee Harris makes a good move and scores the touchdown. So let's watch it again from the back uh, end zone angle here. So number five is the blitzer, right? He's going to come on this blitz. The motion, here comes the defender. It clears out the coverage on the left sideline. So Mac Jones, as soon as he sees this blitzer coming right at him, all he's got to do is loft it over his head and hit Najee Harris and let Najee Harris do the rest. And that's how you beat the blitz. That's his hot against this blitz right here. Again, under pressure, handling it extremely well, not getting you know flustered or, or over it, you know, kind of too big for it, right? He's able to just... Stand in there, know where his answer is, calmly make the throw, and he puts it in enough accuracy there with the throw. It's actually a pretty decent throw, even under pressure, and even lofting it over a defender's head, that Najee Harris is able to run with it after the catch, right? So here comes the blitz. Max going to see the blitz, like, okay, I, I know what I got to do. All right, here comes the blitz. I got Najee Harris over here. This linebacker's late to it. I'm just going to loft it out over there. And here comes six, right? Keeping the play on time, understanding where your answers are, understanding where, you know, the blitz is coming from and seeing the blitz and handling it well. Just good quarterback play. I get it. Not the sexiest play in the world. Not a huge arm throw. Not a big scramble mode drill. None of those types of things. Just a good quarterback play. Here comes the next one. Again, we talk about Mac Jones immobile statue in the pocket bad athlete doesn't have the ability to scramble doesn't have the ability to run a read option or pick up yards on scrambles or or run with his legs or affect the defense with his legs nobody's worried about max legs okay well all that is well and true to some degree no defense is going to go into a game against the patriots when mac jones eventually becomes the starter and say we got a game plan for Mac Jones's legs. We got to worry about Mac Jones's legs. Unlike with Cam Newton, okay, now we got to worry about read option. Now we got to worry about zone read or QB power or QB draw or something like that along the uh, goal line or the red zone or uh, short yardage or whatever. No, you don't have to do that with Mac Jones. That, that's true. You don't have to do that. But Mac is not a terrible athlete. I, I don't see a player that can't move. I don't see a statue in the pocket. So here comes another play here where there's going to be pressure. They're going to get pressure right up the middle on the QB. And this is probably the best play that I saw from Mac in terms of extending the play with his legs. And a, a lot like what the last quarterback that we saw here, not Cam, but the last one that we saw here, you know who I'm talking about. He just makes these movements that are subtle. All right, that are just within a kind of a either the, the the box that's in the pocket that he's standing on, you know, that four by four square, or sometimes just a little bit out of the pocket, rolling out a little bit to his left or rolling out a little bit to his right to buy himself some time. This is a second reaction play. And we talk about this all the time with quarterbacks that are mobile. And everybody said coming into the draft that Mac Jones has no ability to make a second reaction throw. That's the that's the knock on him, right? When the scheme doesn't work perfectly, he doesn't have the mobility, he doesn't have the arm talent to create on a second reaction play. Well, this, I don't know what else you call this besides second reaction. So as we roll the play here, you're gonna see the receiver coming right here on this uh, over the ball route. This is a mesh sit concept, right? So they're going to run this mesh route over the middle. They're going to try to get this underneath crosser with this little pick here. All right. And then they're going to sit right over the football. Nobody's open in initially this, maybe this uh, little drag is open. I think that's Jalen Waddle. You could possibly have hit that, but then here comes the pressure right up the middle, right? The line caves in and everybody's coming after Mac Jones and he just makes a little movement to his left. It's like he's not taking off. He's not Lamar Jackson or he's not Russell Wilson. He's not taking off here. He just makes a little bit of a movement to his left. Once he moves to his left, this receiver right here, that sit route is going to improvise and he's just going to come up the field here and Mac is going to pull this underneath the fender just a little bit, okay? And here comes that sit route and boom, that's a big play. That's a second reaction play where Mac Jones, the play originally breaks down, right? The play is not there because of the pressure and Mac Jones moves off his spot, scrambles a little bit to his left. It's not a huge scramble, right? It's not like he's taking off and gaining 30 yards, but he's moving just enough out of the way 
of the pressure to make a throw happen and make a play happen. So here comes the play, the sit route there by the tight end, right? Here comes the pressure, right? The pocket's caving in. Mac Jones sees it. All right, I'm under pressure. I got to get out of here. Okay, so he gets out of here. He moves just a little bit. And then here comes the tight end opening up off that route and uh, improvising. This is an improvised playground type of play. And Mac Jones is going to give a little pump fake there to pull that defender up. And then he's just going to throw it right over his head. And that's a big play. That's Mac Jones right there making a big play. So I don't want to hear that Mac Jones is a statue. I don't want to hear that Mac Jones can't make second reaction plays all right i'm not sitting here and telling you that he can make second reaction plays like wilson zach wilson russell wilson whichever wilson you want to talk about i'm not going to sit here and say that he can make second reaction plays like you know a, a russell wilson or a patrick mahomes or someone like that but he is capable of doing it and he sees the pressure quickly he feels the pressure quickly and he gets out of the pocket all right so this was the last play i wanted to show because it's just a doozy by Alabama from a schematic standpoint and also just from receiver and quarterback. And Devontae Smith and, and Mac Jones just did some really terrific things together last year, all right? And this play right here, got to think that Steve Sarkeesian had this dialed up for a couple of weeks leading up to the national championship game, knowing if we got this look from Ohio State, this is what we're going to do to beat it, and we're going to get a big play, and this is going to be a big-time touchdown. So what's going to end up happening here is pre-snap, Mac Jones is going to re recognize that these corners are pointed inside. And if the corner is pointed like that, all right, where his eyes are on the quarterback and he's kind of in that zone technique, the quarterback is going to know it's zone coverage. All right. This is zone. This is not man to man. And what Ohio State likes to run is Seattle style cover three. Seattle style cover three, you're going to have the three deep players. All right. And then the backside weak player here is going to be responsible for vertical routes coming across the field. In this case, from number three in particular, number three runs an over route, which is exactly what Devontae Smith does, then that player has got to carry that over route. But before Matt Jones throws this ball to Devontae Smith and everyone at the national championship game or during the coverage of the national championship game said, what's Ohio State doing, right? Why are they putting a linebacker, Turf Borland, who is not a fast linebacker? Why is he in a foot race with the Heisman Trophy winner at wide receiver? That's dumb. And it was dumb. But every game, right, the offensive coordinator dials up what? three, four, maybe five scheme plays from the game plan where you got to hit them, right? If you miss that opportunity, then you wasted 10 days in this case or whatever it is between the college football semifinal and the national championship game planning this play at practice, practicing this play. If we get this look, this is what we're going to do. And you wasted it if you missed the throw. And Mac Jones doesn't miss the throw. So Devontae Smith is going to run this over route here over route just run a streaking crosser right across the field it's actually a deep over all right and what matt jones is first going to do is once he confirms that this is cover three seattle style where this backside linebacker here is going to carry number three vertical on it on a deep over he's going to cut the over route that's the responsibility of that linebacker mac jones is going to say okay the next thing that i need to do is get this safety out of the way because this safety is standing on this hash mark here Technically speaking, it's not necessarily his responsibility in this type of coverage, but obviously the safety is incentive. He's watching the quarterback. If he sees that the quarterback is going to throw this ball deep to Devontae Smith, he's going to go over there and try to help out his linebacker and help out his teammate. So if Mac Jones doesn't make this look off, right, and doesn't get the safety out of there, then the safety is going to have a chance to influence this play. So as we roll the play, they're going to run a little bit of a play action here. And that's just going to hold this linebacker just enough and make him a little bit later to the throw to make it even easier for Devontae Smith to get over the top. So watch Mac Jones as he opens off this play action. He's staring to his left, right? He's staring down this side of the field. 
watch the deep safety. Deep safety is going to react to that. He's going to see it. He's going to open up his hips this direction and start screaming over here. Mac Jones looking over there. I need to go over there too. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, right, Devontae Smith is getting caught up in this foot race with the linebacker, and this safety is getting pulled out of it because of the look off by Mac Jones. So Mac Jones looks it off. He knows where he's going. This is he knows that he's going to dump Devontae Smith the entire way. This isn't like he looks over there, everybody's covered over there, so let me come back over here to Devontae Smith. No, he knows he's going to Smith the entire time, but he's got to get this safety out of here because right now the safety is trying to help out this linebacker. If the safety doesn't get pulled out, then he's going to be over the top of Devontae Smith's route. So Mac Jones pulls it out, and then he has Devontae Smith open, and he just hits a nice rhythm deep shot right so the other thing that we hear about mac jones is he doesn't have the arm strength to throw deep okay he doesn't have a, a big arm like mahomes like josh allen like some of these other guys in the draft this year where he's going to throw it a 70 yard bomb in the air right probably not but he has great timing on the deep ball and because he has great timing on the deep ball his ball placement down the field is very very good for his receivers and he's a very good deep ball thrower one of the best deep ball throwers according to pff in the entire draft class he doesn't have the biggest arm but his timing and his accuracy down the field is really good because of those things and he's able to throw the deep ball anyways with great precision so here we go here comes that i want you to watch mac jones's eyes the play action Gets the linebackers to freeze just a little bit. That's going to help Devontae Smith get over the top of uh, Turf Borland here in this foot race, right? And watch Mac Jones's eyes. He's looking down the left sideline. That's going to pull that deep safety over there. Then he's going to come back to Devontae Smith, and he just hits him in stride for six. So all the time, what I see with Mac Jones, and we can roll through probably a dozen more plays here, I just see a quarterback that gets it. He understands the timing. He understands what the offense is trying to do. He understands the coverage on the other side of the football. And he just has mastered, at least at Alabama, and now he's got to translate it to the NFL. He has mastered timing. He's mastered anticipation. He's mastered reading the coverage. He's mastered all these little things about football that we talk about, moving around in the pocket, right? Avoiding pressure and then making throws off of that evasion. These are the types of things that Mac Jones does extremely well. So we can sit here and we can talk about arm talent and we can talk about mobility and we can talk about second reaction throws and we can say Mac Jones at the NFL level is not going to be able to do those types of things. Maybe that's all well and good. Maybe that's true. But I guarantee you that Mac Jones is going to be able to play quarterback in the league because of all the other things that he's capable of doing. Downfield ball placement thoughtful ball placement okay i showed you that one throw that foot concept where mac jones knows that that fall off defender is coming and driving on the football so he's going to throw it a little bit inside of his receiver instead of leading them outside towards the sideline where we're going to have a collision he's going to like kind of protect the receiver right he's going to protect the receiver he's going to put the ball on the inside and he's going to say okay you got this defender coming i can see that so i'm going to put this ball inside of you when the defender comes down to hit you you're going to have the ability to turn your back and kind of shield the catch point and be able to protect yourself against a big hit thoughtful ball placement good ball placement good timing, good accuracy, good anticipation, good feel for the pocket and movement in the pocket, and plenty of arm. I mean, no, he doesn't have a huge arm, but he's got some zip on his throws, especially within 20 yards of the line of scrimmage. So we just explained all of this and you know, there's still going to be narratives out there of people that are going to say that, you know, Mac Jones isn't talented. Mac Jones doesn't have this arm talent. He doesn't have this mobility, what they, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just sitting here telling you that, look, he does a lot of really good things. He does plays the quarterback position at an extremely high level. And the last thing that I'll say is that the last quarterback here that went on for 20 years and won six Super Bowls, he did a great job of a lot of these things too. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Mac Jones is going to be Tom Brady. But what I am going to tell you is that the things that Mac Jones does well is what typically translates into an offense like the Patriots, right? And I think that's why New England was really uh, jazzed up to take Mac Jones at 15 overall. And I understand that maybe people wanted Justin Fields. I wanted Justin Fields. I also like Trey Lance a lot in this draft as well. But Mac Jones does 
Patriot-like things. He wins in a Patriot-like way. In an offense that wants precision and accuracy, that wants timing and anticipation, that wants rhythm, that wants the quarterback to hit receivers in stride and hit them into yak or protect them to, from oncoming defenders or take care of the football in general and not throw it up for grabs. Those are the types of things that Mac Jones does. And when we hear Patriot quarterback, we often hear about those types of things. And I think that we have defended the wall in a lot of cases on Tom Brady because people say he doesn't have the arm of uh, Aaron Rodgers or the mobility uh, of somebody like an, a Rodgers or a John Elway or something like that. And these quarterbacks, you know, th have more talent, more physical talent than Tom Brady. And that's why they're the GOATs. And, and that's why Brady could never be the GOAT. Patrick Mahomes has more talent than Tom Brady. So, yeah, he doesn't have the six Super Bowls, but he's physically better at football than Tom Brady. Well, if you've defended the wall for the last 20 years saying, look, you have to watch the nuances. You have to watch the details. You have to watch the little things that Tom Brady does well. Then you must do the same thing with Mac Jones because he does a lot of those things, too. Again. Not saying he's going to be Brady, never going to be Brady. We have a long way to go before he's even 50% as good as Tom Brady. The point is, is that Mac Jones is a great fit for the Patriots because he does all the things that we just documented over the last 35 minutes or so, and he does them all extremely well. So that's your new quarterback for the New England Patriots, future quarterback, I should say, for the New England Patriots. Mac Jones, 15th overall selection in the 2021 NFL draft. It's going to be really fun to see him play in New England for a while.